this particular story, but uh, the first story that we were running for you, of course, and that's the situation in the United States. And uh, joining us uh, for that is Professor John Stremelow, who's an international relations expert. Thanks so much indeed for joining us, uh, Prof. Um, these are unprecedented times in some ways, but uh, one looks at who's the incumbent and it, one almost gets a sense that this was bound to happen. Well, in retrospect, I, I suppose you could say that, but they certainly are unprecedented. That's mm -hmm. understatement. It's never, nothing like I've ever seen in, in my lifetime. And I was saying that just a couple of days ago with that raucous uh, debate, which was unprecedented also. So this is a, a year full of surprises with regard to the Trump administration. All right, let's unpack what all of this means. I mean, you know, as soon as I heard... I don't know why, but I, I, I almost went straight away towards the idea that this it really is a national security issue, isn't it? Well, it could be described as that. I thought some of the early reporting on it, which had code red for a national crisis, because uh, you don't know how many people in the upper echelons of the government need to, re to quarantine themselves. And would the government, which is already under stress and thinly staffed, be able to function properly? Uh, and what was uh, uh, Donald Trump's health like? You can't trust the White House, so you really don't know. And it probably won't be until next week that we find out. But having said that, there are procedures in place, constitutional procedures for succession, and uh, Vice President Pence so far tests negative. So uh, Donald Trump has to curtail his campaigning. But other than that, right at the moment, we're really unsure what the magnitude of this crisis is going to look like. Often you can tell how an administration is by the way they handle crises. And I just want to get your thoughts on this, because first of all, we heard the top aide, one of his top aides, uh, Ms. Hopik, uh, tested positive. This didn't come out of the White House. This was a leak. And so they were forced to deal with it. And then we hear that they had found out that she tested positive. But President Trump still got on a helicopter and went to New Jersey even though they knew that he had been exposed to a staff member that had tested positive. What does that tell us about this administration? That it's totally irresponsible, uncaring and self-centered perhaps, but uncaring about others. And yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, Thursday evening, despite all of this and these signs from Hope Hicks, they boarded a plane, unmasked, and went off to Bedminster, his golf course in New Jersey, for 100 uh, people, patrons uh, that are supposedly support are supposedly training, uh, supporting uh, Donald Trump in his election re-election campaign, and they were all exposed to the virus too. So this is a tracing nightmare. But I think you really have to raise the more fundamental question about the administration's ability to handle a crisis. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the overall COVID. I mean, I've said for months that he was acting irresponsibly. He should act more like Cyril Ramaphosa here, at least deferring to science and following basic procedures for masking and for social distancing and for hand washing. But Donald Trump wanted to dismiss this and play it down, although he was now turns out he was telling Bob Woodward of the Washington Post on tape that uh, he was very fearful of the uh, virus back in February, I think, I suspect that he didn't know what to do about it. So he made nice and went on and prayed that some miracle would happen. But that's an irresponsible, indeed a harmful uh, uh, disinformation on, uh, to the public if, if he knew better than what he was telling them. And I think that's the case with Donald Trump often, frankly. So is this an opportunity for him to press a reset button and perhaps have a different language in terms of COVID-19 and wearing masks going forward? Or is Donald Trump just going to be Donald Trump uh, if he recovers from this? Well, you know, I, I, I've had a question about that with regard to mm. Boris Johnson because uh, it's a sim similar behavior. But in fact, uh, Donald Trump is 30 days away from uh, the voting supposedly being completed. And we hope that the electoral integrity is sufficiently clear that we get a definitive answer on who will be the next administration. Now, if he wins somehow, then a reset is possible. But if more likely, 
uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris win, then there is no point in Donald Trump having a reset. He can worry about his uh, likely day in court, uh, far more serious accusations against him than Jacob Zuma faces here, frankly. And so that will be a different uh, period of his life altogether. By the way, on the first debate, one of the bright spots was uh, Joe Biden's very clear uh, spelling out of what he would have done in the case of this COVID crisis and indicting uh, Trump for failing to do all of the um, uh, things possible. And 200,000, 209,000 people are dead. Uh, as a result, not all of them would have been spared, but certainly I think it's twice as high as it need be. The U.S. is only 4% of the population of the world, and it's got 20% of the cases. Dead. I'm trying to figure out why people around Donald Trump don't wear masks. Uh, you know, one can almost imagine Donald Trump, that's his ego, that's how he is. But when you see people, 200,000 people killed by this disease in the country, and then Yesterday, we saw the press secretary address a, 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 a press conference without a mask. This afternoon, we saw the uh, chief of staff come out and address the media without a mask. Um, do you think that they've been bullied into not wearing masks or they genuinely believe they're commander in chief? Um. I, I think, with all due respect, you're, you're treating this as a normal administration. <laughs> I don't see any strategy or any strategist left, frankly. We, we used to say at the outset of the administration that he had some grown-ups in the room, you know, McMaster and, and, uh, and Tillerson and, and others who had been experienced, at least, in the ways of the world. Donald Trump has never been in politics. He's never done anything uh, in, a, in even a corporate setting because he's inherited his wealth and it's a family business. And we're now knowing from the New York Times report last week that he didn't pay taxes for 10 of the last 15 years. And in the first two years in the White House, he only paid, paid $750 uh, in taxes each year. And that's uh, less than a school teacher or a taxi driver would pay. And so um, he is, 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 is due for a comeuppance but he's escaped so far. I'm not sure he can escape this one, frankly. And he never seems to learn because he has no empathy and very uh, a, a little character that I can discern. So um, we're, we are where we've been, but now it's just more clear and dramatic. And I must say again, next week is really going to be significant to figure out whether or not they're telling us the truth on these mild symptoms, or they may be mild now, but they could be more serious next week since he is obese, 110 kgs, I think his weight is, and uh, he's uh, uh, 74 years of old. So he's eight in 10 of uh, Americans' uh, deaths uh, have been in that age cohort. He's vulnerable. Uh, and Joe Biden has been very, very careful in his campaigning and in his small groups and in his mask wearing. And Donald Trump mocked mask wearing, uh, by the way, uh, during the, 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 the first presidential debate so-called debate. Take us through some history where, I don't know, former presidents might have been incapacitated in one form or another. You, we hear about uh, wartime presidents uh, in the US, uh, and sometimes they were not as well as they publicized um, decisions made about how much do you tell the public. How much should Donald Trump tell the public about his incapacitation if it does happen uh, how severe those symptoms might be? Well, um, there are two parts to this. One, um, he, should, he should be transparent. I mean, uh, previous presidents have been very clear. Um, Article 25 was put into the U.S. Constitution in, I think, 1967. Uh, for this very reason, and Article 25 does provide for a succession when the president is incapacitated. It's only been used three times, once when Reagan was shot and twice when uh, George W. Bush went in for colonoscopies and he was under anesthesia for his colonoscopies. And so his vice president, Dick Cheney, was, was acting president for that brief period. Now, here, if 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 Trump really gets seriously ill with COVID, I suspect that Article 25 will be invoked unless he voluntarily cedes his presidency to Mike Pence 
for the duration of his hospitalization, depending upon how serious that is. But the White House is saying, oh, no, 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 but Trump is carrying on business as usual. They always say that. Uh, Boris Johnson said that initially, and he nearly died of COVID, and he's a lot younger than, uh, than Donald Trump. Uh, so that, you know, we wish, we wish Trump well, and, and Biden said immediately that uh, the, the Trump and Millennia, uh, the, his wife, are in the, their prayers, and they hope that uh, he gets better uh, soon or doesn't get seriously ill. Uh, and he may escape it all. Uh, who knows? But we won't know that for sure, at least for another week or so. All right. And uh, is there any, I mean, we keep on uh, speculating on this because the diehards are the diehards. But is there any political capital lost as a result of this episode on top of the debate? Yes, I believe so. Uh, you, you raise a very important point. The polls have been very stable and I think more reliable than in 2016. And in any case, uh, Joe Biden has had a consistent lead of uh, six to eight percent, now up to 10 percent. And I think at the margins, those uh, white, um, uh, non-college educated, uh, dis dischanted, disenchanted voters in the Midwest that's why he went to Pennsylvania on a train trip right after the debate, are coming back. They voted for Obama twice, and then they voted for Trump in 16. And I think they're being moved back so that, that a number of states in the swing states uh, that they're more carefully polling now suggest that that would be the case. And that, you know, 538, the great um, uh, polling analytic uh, organization in the states, uh, has uh, a, a Trump um, lo winning 20 chances out of 100 and, and Biden 79 out of 100 right now. There's still room for change or upheaval, but I think it's almost certain that Biden will win the popular vote and probably the Electoral College with it. So it's just a question of how large and whether the Senate goes Democratic as well. But I think it's very important for South Africans to follow this because they need a Democratic partner, even if they disagree with that partner. They need someone that they can talk to, and they haven't had that in Donald Trump's administration. All right. Well, you know, in American politics at the moment, uh, 24 hours is a long <laughs> time, so anything can happen. Professor John Stremler, thanks very much indeed for joining us. I have no doubt we'll be chatting again very soon.